Okay, hello, I'm Abbas Nadari, the project leader of OS RBAC project, as well as OS PHP security project. I'm here today trying to tell you how awesome the OS RBAC project is, and we're going to have some fun using it and learning how it works and hopefully using it in our projects. So, the RBAC project aim is to cover authorization, which is very important in today's security, and currently two of the OS top 10 list um, stuff is about authorization flaws like access control, functional access control, data access control, and stuff like that. Uh, the OS RBAC project covers the functional access control part of uh, the authorization domain and provides you with uh, a, a, a standard, a standard um, mechanism which is usually very complex, but this makes it very maintainable and flexible to use. So, to explain how to use it, I'm going to show you the website for this. Okay, um, this is the uh, OWASP RBAC website. This is actually the PHP RBAC, which is the OWASP RBAC part for PHP language. This is implemented, and there are currently two versions available. Version 1 is finished, and it's uh, mature enough. We have a beta version 2, which is PSR compliant. PHP folks know what that means, but it's still in beta, but I've used it a lot, and it works fine. So, uh, in the traditional world, we had uh, flat access control lists. We would define whether a user has access to something or not. Now, that wouldn't work in many situations. For example, in big systems who have a lot of permissions, or for peop when people move in organizations and all their permits should be changed when they do, like when someone changes role in the organization. And also the maintain maintenance part of that was like hectic and impossible because if you had like a hundred thousand permits and uh, a handful of users, you had to assign a lot of permissions to each user. And when you had a new one, you had to like copy everything inside. And if you made a single mistake, then your security would be flawed. And that's described here. One wrong user permit would make a serious breach in your security. So for an ARBIC model, we don't assign users to permissions. Instead, we define the middle roles. So in this system, we have users, which are these uh, gray boxes here. We have roles, which are blue in this picture. And we have permissions, which are yellow in this picture. So Instead of assigning a user like a, like Neil to a permission, we assign Neil to some roles. Like he's the network IT guy and admin IT guy in this enterprise or organization. And then we assign roles to permissions. Like we say that network role should have access to server rooms and like security reports. And then anyone who has access to networks will have access to that. Now, in this model, I have trees of roles and trees of permissions, which is an extended standard of NIST, because this standard of NIST defines that only roles need to be hierarchical, which actually happens inside an organization. You have a hierarchy of roles. But in my model, in OWASP's model, the permissions are also hierarchical, because there are a lot of permissions, and this really helps manage them and break down their numbers. So what happens is if you have some role, like if you're an IT, and IT has like access to reports, then you have access to all sorts of reports. So if you have reports, then you have general, you have financial, and you have security. It also works the other way around. So for example, if you're the CEO, you're also the operations, the financial, the IT, and everything below them. So every access that they have, you also have, because you're the CEO. So it actually makes it pretty easy to handle things. And the benefits of it are countless. Because people move and only their roles need to be changed, and maintenance of permits assigned to each role is easy because it doesn't change much. And role permission assignments can be double-checked so that no wrong permits is given to any role. So it actually makes a number of changes to the system very few so that people can be more careful when they do that. So this is the basic idea of RBAC. It, it, you probably haven't seen it around because it's very hard to implement this, and it's actually pretty hard to use it. But we have simplified everything, and 
we're going to show you how here. So if you go to phprback.net slash demo, you will see a nice demo we made for you to play with this RBAC thing. So we have a list of users here, a tree of roles here, which can be dynamic, but we made it static for this example so that you can like try it and have fun with it. But in your system, when you use the library, the PHP RBAC library, you can add any sort of roles or permissions or trees you like. So we also have a static list of permissions here. And you can select one of them. For example, if you select root, you see that user root has role root. And if you click the role root, you see that role root has permission root, which means it has every permission and every role because they're all beneath it. So in this demo, you can play a game. It asks you if a certain user have a certain permission, and you should answer yes or no. So for example, it says that if does Alice Wonderland have access to system root vault? So you go there, click on vault, see that no, no roles directly have vault. But they might have rooms, so you click rooms, and still no roles have rooms. So you click system and see that these three roles have system. So if Alice Wonderland has any of these three or their ascendants, then it has access to vault. So we we'll click on Alice and we see that it's financial. So it shouldn't have access to that because if you click financial, you see that it has no way of reaching vault. It goes this way and this way. So it has no way of reaching vault. So the answer should be no. So the answer was correct. Then it asks you if to Oliver Twist has access to money. So let's select Oliver Twist. It does operations and security. So let's click operations. It has no way to access money. Let's click security. It, it, it either has no way to access money. So this is also a no. Now let's see if does root have access to system room server? What do you think? Well, root has access to everything because it has the root role and root permission. So the answer is yes. Now, does a boss notary have access to reports? Let's select him. So he's CEO, so he should have access to all the roles. But they might not be assigned, so let's click reports and see who has access to it. Oh, apparently only CEO has access to reports. If you click it here, it has reports, system, and money. So the answer is yes. So Root has access to everything. And Alice Wonderland doesn't have access to Root because it's not Root. And I'm the CEO, I have everything. And Root has access to everything. We're out of luck today. And I have to. Okay, so it asks us if Rahul has access to money or not. Let's click Rahul and see what it asks. It has operations, and you if you click operations, I don't think there's a way to access money here. So the answer should be no. And you can play with this game as long as you want to get a grasp of how to use the role-based access control. And there are only two rules here. If you have, if someone has role X. He or she has all descendants of X. So if you're, for example, a CEO, you have operations, financial, IT, sales, marketing, payroll, network, security, admin, and everything that's below CEO. If you're financial, you have sales, marketing, and payroll as well. And also, if someone can do Y, he or she can do descendants of Y. So if you're in a role that has access to reports, you also have access to general, to financial, and to security. So this is how PHP RBAC works, and it's used in a couple of projects and works pretty well. And the main aspect of it is that it's pretty fast because these are functional level access control checks, and they need to be performed before your application does anything. So they need to be fast enough. And uh, it is important to know that these are function level access controls. If you look here, excuse me, in here, it actually describes to you that this is functional level access control. It means that it works on functional parts of an application, not data of an application. 
So everything we have here are functions that can be done in an application or inside an organization. But they're not about data because adding roles and adding permissions to the system is pretty slow. Just checking these are fast enough. So in usual, you don't add a lot of permissions. You add a permission when you define a new function. You add a role when you define a new role in your organization. So that doesn't happen much. It happens like a few times a day. So if it's slow, it's no problem. But checking needs to be fast because before you do everything, you do this check. And it can't be cached because this is a small example. Assume that there are like a lot of roles and like thousands of permissions here for everything. So this check needs to be pretty fast. You can also see the project page on OS. We have a PHP RBAC project page and also an RBAC project page. And you can contribute to that. We have a lot of developers working on this. And uh, you can check them in the GitHub project page. You see that Jesse Burns works a lot on this project. And this is a pretty cool project. So you can see some documentations and installation and usage instructions in this page and also on the website. And you can see that we have two different versions of the code. We have this PHP RBAC code, which is uh, the PSR compliant code. And inside the SRC, we have the core code, which is the old version of the code. And you can also use this. And if you're hoping to port this uh, RBAC thing to different programming languages like C, C++, so that it can be used in embedded devices or Python and other languages so that it can be used in all sorts of applications. So thank you for watching this presentation. I hope you enjoy using PHP RBAC.